and welcome to Rising Match Day this Saturday, the 17th of July. I'm Owen Evans, here to talk through all the news ahead of tonight's Rising game against LA Galaxy 2. Coming up on the show. Road woes continue for Rising, dropping points on their travels, but why can't the side replicate their home form? Lots of games around the Pacific Division, so where does that leave Phoenix? And it's a repeat clash at Wild Horse Pass, the same as the last time we all were there, against Los Dos. But first, let's take a look back at what happened in Charlotte last week. Rising off on their travels again, making their second and last trip to the East Coast, save for a possible final appearance come November. And much like their last trip, that one to Tampa, Rising four behind early. Toby Adewale gives the ball away there. Sylvain Marveau plays it back across to Irvin Parra, who duly tucks away. Charlotte up by one. But halfway through the half, Rising had levelled the scores. Charlotte failed to prevent the ball here from making its way through to David Egbo, who tucks away from close range for his second goal for Phoenix. Each side had a few chances but couldn't capitalise, rising with the last real opportunity to claim the spoils with this free kick in the ninth minute of stoppage time. Not dealt with by the Charlotte defence, but Adewale couldn't ultimately keep his header down. So one all on the night in North Carolina, here's a reaction from after the game. We weren't very sharp. Um, I was pleased. Obviously, they uh, they played three games this week, and uh, I think at the end there you saw being on the road in humidity like this, the, the desire to try and get one. Um, we, just, we just weren't sharp, and, and I think that that, that hurts you and you know to be honest I think in the first half they had a couple of good moments and they're, they're not a bad team at all and uh, you can you can see why that you know Mike's been a coach here for a long time he's done a great job and the surface took a little bit getting used to I think it was a bit heavy for some of the guys uh, they just um, we took too many touches way too much dribbling early on but uh, I thought we sorted it out in the second half um feel good overall on the performance um, obviously disappointed to get a tie at home um, but uh, on balance probably fair I felt like we played really well the first half and, and had enough chances to get to 2-1 uh, the first half we weren't able to do it and then um, I thought we managed the game much better the second half uh, tonight uh, and, and that, Clearly tired legs, and, and we, were, we were you know fighting to get through it. But I thought we did a pretty good job of, of limiting uh, Phoenix. Um, they're yeah, a very good and uh, uh, talented group. Um, so uh, on balance, fair, and we'll take a lot of positives from it uh, for sure. That was a bad mistake. Toby knows. He told me he was. He apologized. He said, "I'm sorry, coach." And he's got to clear that. You know, I think Musa was a little too composed, but we know that about him. And Toby's just got to get that out of here. You're on the road. The worst thing you can do is uh, gift them a goal early on like that. But again, the response, I think we started to settle in. They, they you know, we, we thought they were going to play with three at the back. They played with four and uh, kind of a 4-4-2 four, four, and really tried to close the middle off. And uh, the guys at halftime were a little frustrated, I think. And so we, I thought the second half adjustments were very good and, and we started to figure it out. We... It's, it's very hard to prepare for, for Phoenix. We only had two days to do it, and, and so we spoke to people and uh, so forth and, and felt like, one, uh, it would help us a little bit, uh, you know, uh, in that they wouldn't be prepared for it. They had the week and so forth. Um, two, uh, we knew about the, the strengths they had wide, but we, we really wanted to uh, you know, shut down the middle of the park for them, and I thought we stayed very connected. Um, in the middle, uh, the midfield four did a really good job of, of moving and closing down, and, and they never really got split for, for dangerous balls, uh, so it's credit. Um, I thought the wide backs, uh, uh, Clay and, and Christian, had a hard job, but both of them managed it really well. Um, you know, we, we asked them to deal a lot of times with excellent wingers, uh, 1v1, 
Um, I also thought we did a good job of getting a little bit of support and cover for him. So um, it, we you know, felt it made sense. And we felt also that the on balance to shape helped us eliminate a little bit of their ability to play through Lambert in the middle of the fields. Uh, I thought we did a good job with that. Yeah, they had, like I said, they had two that they probably should have put away. So I think, you know, they, getting the one the way they did, it, it, it was fair. Um, you know, we were, we didn't have as many clear cut chances, but I think, you know, we were pulling the trigger, trigger a little early and, and we were kind of forcing the issue. But um, yeah, I mean, like I said, a point on the road is never a bad thing. So Rising dominating possession on the road, but not with a great deal to show for it. A couple more shots off than Charlotte managed, but not by many at all. This was the first clash ever between these two sides, and they each share a point apiece. After that result, Sacramento remaining the only place that Rising has won on the road this season, after losses to Tampa and San Diego, and that draw against Charlotte. So what's going wrong in those road games? Well, I think in the, this, this past, like, I wouldn't see, there's not a psychological or, or a not prepared, you know, issue. I don't, I don't think that is there. I think it, both of them were literally just mistakes and lack of focus. And, you know, I was pretty hard on the guys Monday, uh, more because of our set pieces. I think we had eight corner kicks and not one of them did we get our head on first. Uh, we didn't play any short. We didn't show any variation. Um, there was one free kick that Aiden hit and we did, they won first, second and third ball inside the 18. Um, and that's kind of a lack of commitment, you know, and when you're on the road, we can't feel that <clears throat> we're just going to score, you know, like when we're at home, you've got the crowd, you've got a big field, you've got a fast field. And we feel really confident that we're going to score goals. So sometimes, you know, wasted opportunities on set pieces at home are not too damaging because you control the game. You go on the road, uh, you're at an opponent's venue. You don't know about the field. That field was, while the surface looked amazing, was very sticky and very slow. And, and uh, I think it hurt us a little bit because we, we didn't move the ball very fast, you know, and um, and, and I wasn't frustrated by that as much as I was saying that when you're on the road, it's concentration. And if we could have stole a, a corner or, or a free kick or something like that, maybe you win that game two to one. Um, because I think after the goal, uh, they had some momentum. They probably should have scored two more. Um, and then we really would have been in big trouble. So, but I thought the second half was a really good response by our guys um really you know dominated in terms of possession but we just weren't dangerous in the final third and we, and we weren't concentrated on our set pieces and and that's you know that ultimately falls on me and the coaching staff and and that's what we told the players that the when we travel it has to be complete concentration and and I just haven't felt like all of our road games have been that way other than the 1-0 win at Sacramento I thought we were extremely focused so how does the team replicate what spurred on that performance in Sacramento? Well, we hadn't won on the road and we had never won at Sacramento. So I think there was a, sometimes there's motivating factors that I don't control. Um, so I think finding, from my perspective, finding the right message for the team when we travel, making sure that they know what they're up against, uh, not just going in and, and uh, saying, we're going to be Phoenix rising. We're going to play as hard as we can and we're going to win. You know, it's, it's just not that simple when you're on the road. Um, it requires, like I said, a lot more focus. And sometimes it takes uh, the opportunity to, for me to find a motivating factor, you know, whether it's a, something a player says, something a coach says, something uh, at the facility, I don't know what it is, but, I have to be probably look for that because at Sacramento, um, knowing that we had never won there and and we had not won a road game in the season at that point, um, it was pretty easy to get the guys motivated. So not saying they weren't motivated for Tampa or Charlotte or anything like that. It's just I think sometimes when the team uh, takes ownership of of a challenge, then you know we we see a, a really really focused group and. Um, it is difficult over a long season and you just have to constantly be challenging them psychologically. 
Well, let's take a look now around the rest of the Pacific Division. We'll start in California on Saturday, Root hosting Lights. And it was an impressive start for the hosts. Lindo Mafeka with the ball through. That finds Tan Weird, who shrugs off a defender to score on his debut. Second half, and Vegas draw the game level. Oakland unable to properly clear their lines, and Danny Chrysostomo of an effort that seems to have taken a slight deflection. It goes in, though, for the equaliser. And then on a corner, once again, Oakland cannot clear their lines. Tony Leone on hand to drive it in. Vegas take it by two goals to one. Moving eastward to Sacramento now, Republic hosting Orange County. The visitors striking early, Chris Weehan given too much space in the penalty area and making the home side pay. Half hour later, Weehan on a quick break. He finds Brian Oloski out wide, who tucks away from a fairly difficult angle with the defender there doubling OC's advantage. Things would go from bad to worse for Sacramento. Eloski brought down by Nabilai Kibunguchi. The red card suspension later overturned by the league, but there was no consolation on the night. Sacramento down to 10. Then in the second half, Sacramento reduced to nine after Mitchell Tainter was shown a second yellow card. An all-round frustrating night for Republic, they lose 2-0. Sunday now, and LA Galaxy 2 hosting Tacoma Defiance in a battle of MLS reserve teams. Tacoma on top early, Alfonso Ocampo Chavez picking up the ball near the edge of the penalty area and putting it away. 1-0 to the visitors. In the second half though, Galaxy 2 pulling it level. Cameron Dunbar knocking the ball across the six yard box, causing Randy Mendoza to play it into his own net. One all, that game ends. Then midweek, Vegas hosting Sacramento at Cashman Field. First five minutes, Republic employing the long throw. It comes out to Tucker Bone who shoots through traffic to give his side an early advantage. Thirty minutes later and it's Tucker Bone again, this time weaving through the Vegas defence before tucking it away. 2-0 to Sacramento. Off a second half corner, Julian Gaines will pull one back, but it would prove too little too late for Vegas, who fall to a 2-1 home loss. Final match of the week, San Diego hosting Orange County on Wednesday. Approaching the hour mark, Grant Stoneman clearing out a player just away from the ball there. Malik Badawi plays the advantage, but he does come back with a yellow card. Stoneman second on the night. He'll be out for their clash against Rising next weekend. The visitors take advantage almost straight away. Miko Kuninga slipping one through for Ira Markinen, who duly finishes. But San Diego had other plans though. Callum Montgomery getting the flick on on a Jack Blake free kick here to bring the scores back level. And then Tumi Mushabani getting his head on the end of a deflected Blake cross to give Loyal a 2-1 advantage on the night. Loyal coming back despite being a man down. So 
So let's take a look at the table. It's quite clearly a three horse race at this point, Rising, OC and San Diego all within two points of each other. Vegas sneaking into the final playoff spot, but they're level on points with LA Galaxy 2 and Tacoma Defiance. Sacramento only one point behind them. Oakland though, lagging behind, they remain in last spot. So upcoming games, a quiet week for the Pacific Division. OC will host RGV tonight at 5, Lights travelling to El Paso for a 6.30 kickoff, and that's it until next Friday. Of course, one other game that should have happened this week, Rising taking on Roots at Las Positas College on Wednesday. That one didn't happen, postponed due to multiple positive COVID tests from the Roots camp. Here's Rick's first reaction to that news on Tuesday. Uh, we are, we're, we were a little beat up from that Charlotte trip. So having a midweek after a, you know, 2000 mile flight in humidity on turf was not something we were excited about anyway. So there was a little bit of relief, I think from the coaching staff it gives us a couple more days. We trained on Sunday. We trained yesterday. We were prepared. Uh, we were going to turn a lot, probably the plan was, I think, six or seven changes. Um, so now everybody can get a little bit more healthy. And I gave them today off and uh, get after it this weekend. But the, now with it being scheduled on the 25th of August, it's in between a couple of games, but West Coast games, and that makes life a little bit better. So what kind of an impact did that change have to this week's structure for Rising? Yeah, like I said, generally today we would be doing training in the morning and then flying after training, and it would have been what we call game day minus one. So they would have done uh, probably because it was close three days in between games, we would have done 11 v 11 in half field. So it had been very tight. But we would have talked a lot about, you know, where do we want to attack Oakland? Um, what kind of shape are we looking at? Do we want both fullbacks high or do we want to rotate them? <laughs> Things like that. And then, um, but now we've given them today off since we did uh, recovery Sunday, re-entry Monday. I think it's great that they can have today off. And tomorrow will be the only day that we really can do a lot of serious work, I guess. So probably some 11 v 11 full field um, and a lot of rotations. When we do that, we usually change the lineup like four or five times just to see different um, groups and how they're feeling, how they're doing. Uh, then Thursday, probably be a light game day minus two. And then Friday, our normal game day minus one is awesome. The guys love it. It's five aside tournament and good competition, very intense speed reaction, short session, but very, very intense. And it's perfect for game day minus one. Now, Galaxy 2, it's a side that Rising has faced already this season, just two weeks ago. Now they're rolling back into Wild Horse Pass, but are we expecting this one to be more difficult or easier than the last time these two sides met? Um, I mean, if you can tell me who's going to be on their roster, that would be helpful. Uh, I, I haven't checked. I think the first team plays this Saturday, and with Gold Cup still going on, they're probably going to be a little thin at the top team. So I would expect, uh, you know, like Dunbar and Augustine Williams and some of those guys probably still with the first team, but you never know. Um, they're good. They're very, very good going forward. They have a lot of very similar players. You know, I think everyone on their team is a seven or 11 or a 10. And, um, you know, we, we were really focused on Judd the last game and, and not letting him get behind us where, where he's really dangerous. And then also with Hernandez, making sure that he didn't find a lot of free space in the middle. So um, you, you have to focus on those two for sure. Uh, but, but again, you know, if they all of a sudden start adding some different players from the first team, it, yeah, it could, could be difficult. But they're a good team. And they could have scored some goals in that game. Statistically, that game was really even. I just think we were pretty clinical at home. Well, that's all we have time for today. Tonight's match, a 7.30pm kickoff at Wild Horse Pass. Enjoy the match. Goodbye.